Project Zomboid is a game built on the back of a few key concepts, one of which is looting. We break and enter into the homes of previous residents now shuffling around on the streets outside in a less than alive state, with the ultimate goal of acquiring the next item on our lists. Whether it's a can opener, a new backpack to hoard more items we convince ourselves that we need, or an assault rifle which we are unlikely to use before we meet our untimely demise. But what if there were no buildings to loot? What if all you had were your wits, ingenuity, and a forest? A really, really big forest. In this video, I attempted a wilderness survival playthrough. A content creator known as Drunk on Life had put together the ultimate wilderness survival mod collection in one of their previous videos. And having watched a good friend of mine, Arian, attempt this very same style of playthrough, I decided to give it a go myself. And whilst I was sure that my frankly massive brain would remain unchallenged by this trivial endeavor, it looked like fun, and it was. If you find being on the brink of dehydration, starvation, and exhaustion fun. The rules were simple. Use the collection of wilderness survival mods and the previously mentioned gigantic brain to survive as long as possible. To make things interesting, however, I could not enter any buildings. I could use items that were crafted, foraged, looted from zombies, or looted from containers outside. But of course, in the middle of a forest, it would mostly be crafted or foraged. First order of business was to pick a character. For me, there was only one occupation to choose for this challenge. Park Ranger. This would give me the ability to craft a selection of traps to catch small animals, as well as a host of other bonuses in foraging, carpentry, and axe skills, all of which would be important. With a complete lack of any pharmaceuticals, I chose to take Herbalist so that I could create my own herbal remedies should I be injured along the way. Cat's Eyes for increased vision at night in an environment devoid of most light sources, and lastly, Fast Learner on account of the lack of books to learn from. As for negative traits, I took Slow Healer, Unlucky, Weak Stomach, Clumsy, Slow Reader, and Sunday Driver. This was the ultimate survivalist, Steve. He was to be my champion for this challenge. The Bear Grills of Project Zomboid, only with less drinking his own urine. Dropped on a beach, I was immediately greeted by two of the locals, just as bitey here as they are in Kentucky. But after the standard cultural greeting, I was able to use their tattered rags to fashion some clothing that would give me some limited protection against the elements. I began foraging immediately, conscious that in order to survive, I would need tools, and to build those tools, I would need branches and stones. Axes, knives, spears, whatever it was going to be, I needed these two basic components. Whilst I was rewarded with a couple of mushrooms and some herbs, I'd forgotten shoes in my haste to progress, and I was soon punished for that negligence. To make shoes, I needed twine, so I took a moment to do my research in the crafting menu whilst I gave Steve his first bath. Now, the easiest way to make twine would be with a set of two twigs, which might have taken a while for me to find if it weren't for a lovingly wrapped gift from another local. These scissors were going to be a major lifeline allowing me to cut up some ripped sheets into twine, and from there, I was able to fashion some shoes. This whole wilderness thing wasn't so bad after all. I was making progress already. I continued to forage my immediate surroundings, finding some logs to later be used for fire fuel or planks as part of further crafting. And even more importantly, I was able to find a chip stone, which I used to put together a makeshift axe. All of a sudden, I had a very real problem on my hands though. Steve was getting hungry and thirsty. The hunger I could solve, but thirst was going to be another matter. I couldn't just drink from the water beside my camp. I'd have to build a container for the water myself and then boil it to make sure it was drinkable. For that, I'd need a knife. I immediately regretted my decision to focus on an axe as my first craft, and to make matters worse, I was forced to use said axe in self-defense, and it was broken before I could even put it to good use in my crafting efforts. This was nothing short short of a disaster, and I had to recover quickly if Steve were to remain the superior survivalist above Mr. Grills. The clock was against me, as Steve's dehydration was worsening, and I was having to spend significant amounts of time fending off the grasp of the undead. After a couple of lucky foraging finds, though, I was able to buy some more time by consuming a number of berries, keeping death by dehydration at arm's length for the time being. 
One more chipped stone, and just in time, too. Dehydration was already creeping in again as I crafted a knife, then used said knife to carve some bowls from the logs I had found earlier. These two bowls would allow me to collect some water, which now only needed to be purified. Half of the challenge was complete, but I still had one last hurdle to overcome, and that was starting a fire. Thankfully, I already had some branches on hand from earlier, and with the remaining log, I was able to create a notched wooden plank using my knife. This, combined with a branch, would allow me to attempt starting a fire. I say attempt because this isn't like the lighters or matches that we're used to from the luxury of urban survival. No, this fire starting method wasn't guaranteed to be successful and would break a branch every time I failed to start a fire. I had three branches, three attempts, and an ever-closing window in which I could be successful before Steve died of dehydration. Not one, but two failed attempts at starting a fire. This was my last branch and last hope for survival. But thankfully, third time was a charm, and I was able to take a moment whilst the water boiled to sit back and breathe a little for the first time since I started this challenge. Now, it's amazing how much we take for granted in Project Zomboid when it comes to survival. Sure, you can turn down loot settings and make things a lot more difficult for yourself in that way, but I'd never truly found myself at risk of starvation or dehydration right from the get-go in a regular playthrough. Even on the rarest loot settings, you'd find something to keep you going inside the first couple of hours. This was completely different. I wasn't just battling the undead, I was battling the elements, my surroundings, and the needs and desires of Steve. All of my crutches that I'd gotten so used to in vanilla Project Zomboid had been removed, and I almost buckled under the pressure with this near miss. Daylight was waning though, and as much as I loved listening to my own thoughts, I needed to use those last couple of hours well. Under the dwindling daylight, I was able to find the necessary supplies to craft a weapon and a stone hammer, which was the next step towards my second major goal, shelter. The hammer was the first part of succeeding in this goal, but I'd also need to build some wooden nails, which I would need a second level in carpentry to create. Despite my success towards this goal, night had fallen and I needed to get back to camp as Steve was once again my limiting factor on account of being tired. One torch lay Later, built to guide me back to camp, I turned in for the night at the end of our first day. I had made a lot of progress on my first day, but with the new dawn came new challenges right from the outset. Rain. I had to hope that this was just a passing shower, because my makeshift sheet clothing wasn't going to protect me against harsher conditions, and I'd be at the risk of catching a cold. In standard Project Zomboid, this might be an inconvenience, but out here, it could be a death sentence. I needed shelter, and quickly, but for that, I'd need that second level in carpentry. I spent most of the day foraging for supplies. I was able to craft a backpack for Steve so that he could carry more stuff, and craft a saw so that he could begin turning logs into planks for some carpentry experience. Day 3 soon rolled around, and I had managed to avoid catching a cold for the time being. I began my duty as a westerner in foreign lands, and started deforesting the area as soon as possible. Each tree served not only to provide crucial building supplies, but to get me closer to those wooden nails I needed to construct my new home. A jump scare? followed by my heart sinking. I had gotten complacent, and I was immediately punished once again by the unforgiving nature of this playthrough. At the very least though, it wasn't a bite, but it was going to be hard to keep this wound clean under the circumstances. Going from bad to worse, the rain had returned as well, with a vengeance. No time to dwell on my mistake though, I pushed on, and by the end of the day, I was able to get to the second level in carpentry that I needed. I began building immediately. Steve was suffering from a lack of sleep, but it was impossible for him to do so whilst experiencing the pain from his fresh wound. This would mean less daylight tomorrow, but all I could do was continue to build into the night, until eventually, Steve's desire for sleep 
sleep overwhelmed the pain. Day 4. Steve worked tirelessly under my guidance, constructing his new home away from home at blistering speeds. I wouldn't be able to build a roof just yet, but this was an important step towards that goal, and before long I had a half-functional shelter with storage capacity for all the supplies I was finding. Surviving on nothing but bugs and foraged items though was taking its toll on Steve. Mixed with the pain of a now infected wound, I decided it was best to give him a much deserved break. I'd found a magazine on a zombie earlier, which seemed like a just reward for Steve's efforts. He sat fireside for a while and indulged in a pleasurable reading session, along with a little fishing using a makeshift rod constructed from a branch and some twine. Steve had even managed to catch himself something to eat, which wouldn't make him depressed, even if it wasn't exactly going to be on the cover of a fishing magazine anytime soon. As the fourth day came to a close, I was once again pondering my next steps. I had made significant progress in the first four days, and whilst I had set out on this playthrough brimming with confidence, I had soon been given a reality check by the lack of supplies, tools, and other luxuries I was so used to in the standard Project Zomboid setup. I've accumulated over 1,000 hours in Project Zomboid, but this was still proving to be a challenge, and a large one at that. Steve's infected head wound could come back to bite him later, unless I managed to fashion some better clothing to protect him from the elements. Perhaps a poultice from medicinal herbs was needed, and how was I going to set myself up with a reliable source of food going forward? I had many questions, but one thing was for sure, Steve and I hadn't been beaten just yet. Thank <laughs> you.